Sorry. Okay. <laughs> All right. Let's get started. Um, good to see that you made it to the last slot of uh, of Drupalcon. Um, has it been good so far? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Good. Awesome. Let's see if we can make this work. Do it like that. Can you all hear me all right? Is that yes. good? Yeah. yeah. All right, so we'll talk about core initiatives and corporate roadmaps. Uh, I'll share some, uh, some lessons or perhaps uh, like a point of view from how it's been to run an initiative for the past five years or so, depending on how you count. Um, but it's also kind of uh, maybe a proposal for how to sustain uh, core initiatives. So the, the talk will, will turn into that uh, in, at the end. Uh, it's an uncomfortable topic, right? We're going to talk about money, kind of intentions, uh, you know. Uh, these are not great things to talk about, but it's, um, I think, very necessary. Um, there has been a lot of uh, conversations about this already in the community, not only in Drupal, but like in the, in the wider community. So Dries wrote a, a very popular blog post. Uh, Webpack uh, is kind of leading the pack. <laughs> uh, in terms of you know figuring out ways also to to sustain open source, MongoDB Elastic um, has recently had to change their licenses because they couldn't sustain their open source model. Um, and there are lots, lots of other interesting uh, kind of initiatives out there as well. So the outline of this talk, um, I'm going to share a couple of lessons. Um, uh, the and then we'll kind of look at maybe what the perfect kind of initiative might look like. Like, what's the ideal setup? And then a proposal towards the end. But before I go into, the, uh, into that, who am I? Um, I work for Pfizer, a long-time core contributor and uh, coordinator of the Workflow Initiative. I am at Dick Olson on Twitter. My DMs are open, so harass me on Twitter if you don't like what I'm saying. <laughs> <laughs> or here in the room, for that matter. Um, so, just to be clear, this is my personal point of view. Uh, this is not the opinion of my uh, employer. Um, uh, however, of course, it being my personal point of view, it's still a perspective from within a what we sometimes refer to as a user organization. An organization that is using Drupal. You know, Pfizer's purpose is not to um, you know, deliver or build Drupal sites because, you know, for any clients. We, we use Drupal to provide value to, to our users, to our marketers, and at the end of the day, to our patients. Um, so that's an, uh, you know, unique uh, kind of point of view from, from core initiatives or core development perspective. Not unique, I shouldn't say unique, but uh, it's definitely more common to see Drupal agencies or, or so contribute to core. Um, it, uh, you know, at Pfizer, it's my job to effectively buy and provide technology for my users. So like that, that is an interesting uh, point of view as well. And again, I, I tell the story as myself, as a community uh, a member, a community leader. Um, and, and also uh, an, an, an interesting... Uh, uh, twist here in, in terms of how I uh, choose to lay out this um, uh, uh, this session is um, I'm, I'm going to look at what the initiative did for Pfizer, not so much as what Pfizer, because Pfizer drove the initiative, right? But I want to kind of decouple Pfizer a little bit and see what the initiative as, as a group of people did for Pfizer. So I'll, and it, perhaps that will become uh, evident uh, more clear as I, as I continue here. So I want to start by sharing a couple of lessons. First of all, I think core governance, generally speaking, works quite, quite well. Um, the initiative roadmaps have provided a lot of clarity, I think, for organization who, organizations who want to participate. There's kind of a, you know, there's a direction. We know roughly where Drupal is heading. Um, a set release schedule um, has also provided certainty. Uh, along with that clarity, so that's great. Um, we've got a great product team. Uh, now, Boyan and, and Roy hasn't uh, been involved just recently, but they help the workflow initiative uh, a lot, which is why I'm bringing them up here. They've been uh, very important for, for the initiative. Um, and this, in and of itself, has been a great enabler for um, 
any company who wants to participate and, and develop Drupal. You need, you need clarity, you need direction, and you need some certainty if you're going to make an investment and, and contribute back to Drupal. So we need to do more of this. Um, also, for the workflow initiative, um, if you're contributing the right thing, you'll probably get in. If you have the backing of the community, of, of the product team, then it's, that makes it a lot easier. So kind of you know, picking, picking where you, where you uh, contribute is also important. <coughs> All right. And then, you know, in, in pitching this idea to, uh, to the company that I work for, um, it's important how you kind of lay out the reasons for why you want to uh, uh, contribute something. It's all about optics, in a sense. You know, don't sponsor open source. Sponsor uh, kind of implies that it's some sort of charity, right? Um, companies don't do charity uh, for software tools. Pfizer as an organization do charity for human causes, right? Not for a software tool, you know? Um, so, you know, in, in pitching the idea to, to a company, you know, sh I want to ship products with the best developers. I want to deliver something valuable to, to the organization. That's how you get, you know, a, a director to sign that bill. You know, I like products. That's nice. I'll sign that bill. That's a good product. Like, it's not, this is not charity. I mean, of course, the, the causality is, is, is in a way, you know, contribution. But um, so it's important how you kind of angle it. Um, and you, you need to ship a great product, right? Uh, you need to, first of all, know what you want to build and want to contribute. And if you don't, do research and use data for, to back up your idea. Um, not only do you need to convince the community that it's a good idea, uh, but of course you also need to convince that company that you want to uh, then also contribute to the development of this idea. Um, you need good product management. And you need to be able to very clearly explain what is the value of this? Who's going to use this feature? Um, you know, that's, that's critical. Um, in the core initiative, uh, in the workflow initiative, uh, we started back in 2015. Between 2015 and 2017, we worked a lot with uh, Roy, uh, Boyan, and, and Joseph Toff to kind of flash out, flash out what is this thing going to look like? What, what, what is the value? Who is it for? And how is it going to work? Um, you need to have that before you put yourself in front of a, a company and say, this is what I want to build. Um, it needs to look great, right? This is where a, a good product team, good designers are incredib uh, incredibly important. Again, underscoring kind of the value of, of why you need to do something rather than I want to sponsor, sponsor something. I want to help the community. That's awesome, but at the end of the day, it's sad to say, but companies are there for, you know, for their own bottom line, uh, rather than you know, contributing to a software tool. So thank you, Boyan, Roy, and, and Joseph, who did a lot of work up front in kind of this, uh, defining this. And it was already back in 2015 um, that these ideas came together. And this is pretty much what we have in core now, right? We had the idea of, uh, of kind of hierarchies of, of workspaces. That patch is, is pending to be committed now. Uh, the user interface, although it's not exactly like this, we're pretty close. Um, and it's been you know, steering the development. And this is the product that we put in front of you know, my directors and my managers, uh, where I said, this is what we want to build. And this is why it's valuable. Right. You can, uh, on the YouTube link there, I'll share the slides later, you, you can see the presentation from I think it was 2016 or 2017 when we kind of walked through the whole um, uh, product eff effectively that we wanted to contribute. Another interesting thing when, you, when you're pitching your idea and when you want to build something sustainable, uh, especially for, for a big corporation whose job it isn't to really develop Drupal is uh, I, I was trying to find the best words here, but like reducing reputational risk. I'll, I'll kind of talk to what that means. You won't get fired for not contributing, 
Like as a manager, I'm a technology ma manager at Pfizer. I could have picked a simple route. I could have gone and hired another company to, you know, develop a CMS or build some some feature, and uh, maybe a big consultancy firm, you know, a big contract. That that's comfortable for me as a manager. I will never get fired for choosing Adobe or for choosing Microsoft. You know, that's a safe route. So when we pitch to companies to do things the core initiative way or contribute to that. We need to be kind of conscious of that. We need to help companies feel kind of, you know, we need to reduce, reduce that risk. You know, timeline and budget targets are always in, in the way of, um, you know, uncertain contributions. Contributions is, I don't know if it'll get in. I don't know, you know, we're putting ourselves, you know, out, out in the open. It's risky. Um, we were put in front of the community working group at, at Pfizer for misconduct. That could have, that could have been disastrous for, for Pfizer, right? Um, we, we had timeline targets, so, you know, uh, admittedly we stepped on some people's toes. And because we needed to ship something, we needed to get something done. And, you know, um, and it's good that we have this process so we can, can you know, can sort out these disagreements so it's great I'm, I'm very appreciative of the of the process but that that's a huge risk for a company so we need to kind of be uh, conscious of that <coughs> and also the structure of the uh, contribution is important very important is the company paying someone to deliver a feature or is the company implying responsibility of a piece of software that is being built there's a very important fine line uh, between the two, uh, from a legal point of view. Um, so if you can kind of, if we can think about how we get organized and how we structure our core initiatives, uh, that might have a, 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 you know, a big impact to, to how we do things. And, and I'll, I'll get into kind of some concrete examples and a proposal for how we, how we perhaps fix this. Uh, and then, um, of course, we need to get organized. Um, presenting a sloppy solution or a sloppy idea to a company, you'll, you'll never get, you know, get buy-in uh, on that. You need a you know, great product manager um, to, to think about these ideas. That's where uh, Boyan and Roy and, and Joseph helped out a lot. I, I'm not a product manager, um, so, so that was, that was uh, very important, to conceptualize that product and you know, have a story. Uh, to, to, to share in a way. And as a team, uh, you also need to be ready to take accountability and actually deliver that product. Um, if a company is going to put some money on the table, there needs to be something coming back. You know, and there needs to be, I, we can't guarantee, of course, but we, maybe we can do things to kind of try to do our best to, um, to, to do our best to meet timelines and goals and so on. We need to be conscious of that. Otherwise, companies won't show up, I think. And of course, you need awesome designers and developers. So, uh, you know, someone at the end of the day needs to deliver this. Uh, it doesn't matter if you have a great idea if you can't deliver it. So, you know, Andre and Andre and everyone else in, in, in the room here who helped build this, um, thanks to you. Um, um, so get organized, right? We need to kind of structure the team in a, in, in, in a way that makes it possible to execute and deliver. And make paying for it easy. <laughs> how are we going to receive, like, how are we going to pay people, right? We've had to figure out quite some interesting things in, in how we actually, you know, pay for contributions uh, within my company. It's not as straightforward as, as it, you know, as it is a big... A corporation might not be able to set up contracts directly with freelancers. It needs to kind of um, you need to you need to organize it. So make paying for it easy. Uh, budget and finance is hard enough in a large corporation, and paying a group of contributors isn't making it any easier for a you know a manager or a director to sign a bill. So we don't have a solution to that today in core initiatives. <laughs> if someone if if a company rocks up today and say. Hey, I want to contribute to the media, li like the media library initiative. How? I, you know, I have a bill. I'm ready to sign. How do we do it? I don't know. You know, <laughs> send Acquia some money. That that would work. 
but should everything go through Acquia? Probably not, right? Um, I like Acquia, it's not. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and don't put the burden on the corporation who wants to show up and do the right thing. Don't put the burden on them to figure it out, right? Um, we, we had to figure it out at, at Pfizer, how to structure this and how to organize this. That was additional overhead, additional complexity that we could also have, you know, not needed to deal with. Would have been great, you know. <clears throat> All right. I realized it's actually, there was six lessons. I said it was seven at the beginning. <laughs> My counting was probably not that great. Uh, uh, middle of the night yesterday. Um, so... So what does the perfect initiative look like? So these are, these are lessons that I just went through. Uh, by no means am I saying that you know, the workflow initiative was perfect. We didn't do all of this, right? But this, what I've gone through here would have been, you know, that's the lessons we took out of. It would have been great to do this, right? I think our initiative has been very, very successful. But we, I think we also fell short in, you know, in a couple of ways. Uh, especially when it came to kind of getting ourselves organized and, and sustaining funding has been hard. Uh, Andre's done a great job building all the awesome features, but he's been left alone many, many times as well. So, um, so what could the perfect initiative look like? This is, this is not going to work for everyone. What, what, I'm proposed to do, what I will propose here um, is not a, like a silver bullet. A bullet. It's not the, you know, a solution for every initiative. There's different kinds of initiatives, but this might be part of a of a bigger picture, perhaps. Uh, but generally speaking, uh, we went through it a little bit earlier on. That must be a good idea, <laughs> right? <laughs> First of all, um, backed by data, maybe backed by user research, backed by community feedback, um, and you know, the more certain we are that it's a good idea, the better, of course, right? And it needs to be a team who corporations want to fund, right? It should, the idea should be so great, the team should be so great that it shouldn't be a question, you know? Um, funding this, uh, the initiative should be the best option to solve that common problem. There shouldn't be another option to, to go about it. It should be the best presented option on the table. Um, and of course, the, need, the team needs to be uh, capable of delivering the best solution, which means the teams need to be reliable, uh, well-funded, uh, you know, be able to work regularly, preferably full-time or, or at least kind of consistently part-time, uh, so that we can set some expectations around how much we can de develop, when we can finish working on things, and, and, and things like that. And, you know, as an industry, we've already figured out that taking an iterative and, and data-driven uh, approach to product development is usually the best way to go about something. Not always, but it's, it's something that most companies do when they do product development, when they build, whether it's Adobe building their CMS, they're not guessing, you know? They do market research. They use data to support uh, their decisions. They ask users, right? And uh, the perfect initiative also makes it easy for, for corporations who want to do the right thing to you know, chip in uh, or, or partake. So the, the question then becomes, how do we position initi initiatives with a competitive edge? There needs to be something that puts uh, initiatives apart from other ways of doing something. So if there is a common problem, let's say we need, uh, you know, a better ways to find and choose media uh, in, in Drupal Core. We, now, prior to media uh, library, perhaps. How do we make sure that the team who wants to contribute this to core is the best option to go about it, right? <coughs> so here's, here's the proposal. Um, so we have the telemetry initiative. Um, this initiative, we could kind of twist this a little bit from the, uh, from the initial proposal. This could be an initiative to coordinate data-driven product development for core initiatives' purpose. Um, 
for those that are not familiar with what the telemetry initiative is, it's an initiative that wants to build uh, solutions and, and functions in Drupal to collect data from, from opt-in Drupal sites, things like usage, statistics, user behavior, uh, etc. Uh, what modules you use, what features perhaps you use within a Drupal site, what fields are people using, what field widgets are people using, where do people click all the time, like all these things. Uh, the, the, um, you have the issue number on the screen there if you want to uh, go check it out. The initiative would then also um, maintain data and privacy policies for this data that's being collected. Uh, the data would be uh, sent back to, to, to Drupal.org um, as, the, the, as you know, we have uh, modules doing that in core already. So we'd have to build out the infrastructure on Drupal.org. Um, the telemetry initiative could also uh, take it upon itself to uh, go gather large scale and, and do perform large scale market and, and user research. So not only is it sometimes enough to collect data about the product itself, we also need to go and ask users. So it's kind of this initiative to like gather data, gather uh, feedback from the community or, 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 or from, from users. And here's, here's the kicker. <clears throat> the telemetry data I propose should only be pro pro provided to core initiatives. Um, and core initiatives only. It creates a very competitive edge for core initiatives and creates this massive incentive to go through core initiative to get work done. These are people who wants to develop something in core, uh, we provide them with the telemetry data. Maybe they uh, need to sign an NDA uh, with the Drupal Association. They can't share this data outward, like, externally. Um, we would then ensure that core initiatives are equipped with the best data to build the best features in the best possible way. Uh, it'll be by far the best option to go about something to build a media library, to build a layout builder, or, or to build uh, workspaces, for example. No other team will have access to the same data to build a non, or to build a proprietary solution. Um, and we can then couple this uh, with kind of helping to coordinate the funding for this as well. Um, so I will uh, volunteer as, as a community member, not as a Pfizer employee, to, to pr possibly drive this forward as, as, as an option and, uh, and see how we can organize this. I, this is not a complete solution by any means, but it's, a, it's an idea. <coughs> so the question then becomes, how do we really organize this? Right? Because that's just an idea, collecting data and so on. We need to you know, organize it somehow. Um, and there's something called Open Collective. Um, that's what Webpack is, is currently using. So Open Collective is this, I think it's a not-for-profit organization. Um, I'm not sure about that, but they provide infrastructure for open source projects or other, um, um, uh, other t similar types of organizations. They provide a, a legal entity. Uh, they provide uh, some legal support. Um, and they provide means of collecting funding. So they, you know, it's, it's a legal entity that a, a corporation who wants to contribute can pay. The Open Collective will then be responsible for then uh, distributing this to members of this Open Collective. You can put together uh, whatever collectives you want. In the case of Webpack, uh, they, they kind of have their own offerings. Uh, Open Collective makes it possible to have transparent budgeting. Uh, Open Collective, in this case, they've managed to pull together an annual budget of uh, nearly half a million dollars, um, which is pretty impressive. So, core initiatives through Open Collective, then. Um, it creates a legal and professional-looking front. Remember, at the beginning, we talked about it's all about optics, right? Um, it needs to be presented the right way. We need to have a, a reliable team. I remember, the, we want to ship you know, products and features with the best developers. We can get, so we can get organized in, in open collectives. With uh, telemetry, 
uh, these you know the, the open collectives can effectively become uh, product teams in, in a sense and, and do iterative um, uh, development and, and use uh, the tools by, by open collective um, and and also it's more like it's the, the, one of the challenges we had at Pfizer is it's almost been you know it's been Pfizer in a sense building the software we're taking on a very reputational risk for it would almost have been better if we could pay an entity to <coughs> deliver features for it. This is what companies do all the time with IT projects. Pfizer doesn't build any software. Like we pay, we pay uh, companies or entities to go and do that for us because we're in the business of, of improving patients' lives, not building software. Um, so while we need to make, you know, contributing the, the best possible way of, of uh, solving a problem and not go and build things ourselves. That's not what we're here for. And most user organizations will have exactly the same take uh, on, uh, uh, you know, as Pfizer in this case. Um, and then uh, we talked about getting organized. This is what Open Collective provides, you know, simple finances, budgeting, uh, etc. Some additional ideas. There are already these are already uh, partially at least uh, ideas from from the telemetry initiative. Uh, of course, the telemetry data that we collect should be you know anonymous, and it should of course be possible to opt out your site from sending back data to to Drupal.org. Um, um, and uh, I already mentioned it. We probably should have some sort of non-disclosure agreement with people who actually get access to this data so that it's not shared, open and public. That's my proposal at least. Uh, so that it's, we create this competitive advantage for core initiatives to use this data in developing solutions for this. Imagine uh, the admin theme initiative. Imagine if they had access to a million Drupal sites uh, clicks, heat maps, uh, usages, you can see where, uh, where people are struggling. If you want to build a better admin theme, any sensible organization go to this team because they will have all the data. They, they, they create this good, very massive incentive to go and do the right thing. Um, Briefly spoke about the, the fourth point as well. We should probably include module usage statistics, but I think we should be more granular than that as well. We should measure features, what widgets, you know, what, what fields are people querying in the, in the JSON API? What types of fields? Um, you know, what, what are the error codes that JSON API sends back all the time? Where are people struggling, right? Uh, where are people clicking and missing buttons in, in the media library, etc. So we should be granular. We could uh, embed Matomo or previously Piwik uh, in the admin theme to track user behavior. It's a controversial t topic. As open source and enthusiasts, we're not very keen on kind of privacy invading uh, things. But this is how products are developed. This is how Adobe is competing with Drupal by doing data-driven product development. Arguably, we need to do the same to, to stay competitive. And here we can even create this competitive advantage for people who want to build uh, features in core. And I think that we should combine telemetry data with user market research data. That should also be in the, in the package of data that we give to core initiatives exclusively to, to use. Of course, if anyone else wants to go and do user research about Drupal, they're free to. But this initiative would try to go out and do it large scale. We'd, you know, we'd figure out good ways of doing that. And this would be, in addition to telemetry data, data that the initiative, uh, initiatives would get. Uh, imagine also coupling this with the automatic upgrades uh, initiative. We, you know, we, we ship a feature, we change something, uh, we measure it. And then we roll out an auto upgrade and see what happens to user statistics. Did people, you know, use it? Did they not use it? Use it for experimental modules? We roll it back. We don't include the complexity if they're not using it, right? A/B testing, effectively, right? Be awesome. 
And that is pretty much it. Um, there is uh, 15 minutes left, uh, so thank you. I'd love to uh, continue the conversation if people have questions or feedback. Um, I'm Dick Olson on Twitter, so yeah, thank you. What, uh, what uh, uh, thoughts have been Should bringing we get us to the mic? Yeah. Yeah. I don't know. If it's oh. Yeah, it's working. Yeah. yeah. So, Dick, what, what thoughts have been put into um, uh, the privacy piece of this? And I'm thinking in the context of GDPR and the new uh, privacy privacy laws that are about to go in place uh, in, in place in California, for example. Mm -hmm. uh, it's a very good question. Um, it's something we'd have to be very, very deliberate about, of course, um, and figure out the best ways to do it. Like, completely anonymizing the data, I think, you know, is absolutely needed. Um, and should we use existing tools uh, like uh, PWIC? Uh, they are already providing kind of GDPR compliant features where you can, you know, ship that software, that library in a way that is GDPR compliant. Um, so that has to be, you know, first priority, of course. Um, so we need to do a lot of thinking about this. So by no means, you know, do we have a complete solution yet? Ben? It totally makes me nervous. Yeah, it does, right? But I think it's necessary. Um, thanks. That's really interesting. It's interesting to hear a very different perspective uh, on initiatives. Mm -hmm. um, I have one question and one remark. Um, the remark is uh, what the things you're trying to propose or trying to get off the ground are very similar to what um, Mike Myers tried to do a number mm -hmm. of years ago. Okay. So I think the two of you should definitely talk uh, for sure. He used to be at Acquia, now he's at Tech One. Uh, okay. So definitely. Cool. And, and just to be clear, the telemetry initiative uh, isn't my idea. This I don't know if that is no, what... No, no, no. I'm sorry. I was referring to... Actually, is this thing on? Yeah, it, it is on. Okay. Yeah. I, I can't hear my own voice. It's kind of strange. Um, uh, no, he wasn't actually talking about uh, the telemetry aspects. Um, that is completely new and separate. But what he was trying to do is to get big corporations to fund certain features. Yeah. And it was really hard to get that off the ground, to get them convinced. But it was different in that... You're proposing to, through it, to do it through um, Open Collective, which is something that didn't exist at the time. He was trying to do it through Aquia's LSD, mm. large-scale yeah. Drupal program at the time. So I, I'm sure that the Aquia component makes it very different, uh, but it was like a way to get it off the ground. I think yeah. this has yeah. a better chance for sure. Mm. But he probably has some insight into concerns that other corporations and Pfizer might yeah. have because he talked to a lot of organizations. So Thanks. You should find out. Um, the question I had is, um, so if you're collecting lots of data, and I agree that we should be doing data-driven development and uh, making feature decisions like is this worth including or not and so on, the interesting challenge there, aside of privacy, is that uh, if only a certain team has access to the data, and the team that makes data-driven decisions, how do they communicate to the community like we are making this decision because the data says so, but the community can't see the data? So, like, how how, how do you propose? Do you have, have you do you have thoughts about that? I mean, just clearly explaining to the community that this team is doing data-driven development, that this team has access to high-quality data, uh, would probably build a level of trust, I think, that this, this team is just not guessing when we're shipping right. features, right? But, but at the same uh, time, like, uh, it's something doesn't get into Drupal core, generally speaking, unless it has test coverage. And mm -hmm. we don't trust, like, hey, does the patch is green. Trust me, I've written great tests. No, we actually require a uh, patch to be posted without the actual fix and mm -hmm. to actually post yeah. a, a test-only patch and that should fail, like, we, we, we verify, basically. Like, it's kind of... I, it's kind of hard to see for me at least right now. Like, just trust me, this button shouldn't exist. This feature shouldn't exist. Like, that's that's a tricky thing. Yeah, I mean, I, I think with the, in terms of test coverage, I think every, everything should always be built with full test coverage. But if if the team, you know. Uh, if a team is arguing, we need to move the button in this dialogue from here to here, 
Yeah, you know. I think like the, about some locations may be a too trivial an example almost. Yeah. Like it's, it's like more critical aspects of, of a feature yeah. or of a product or of a module. Yeah. Like that could be hard to... Yeah. yeah. I mean, I think um, probably what, uh, what, what does make sense is uh, to always have kind of an outcome driven... The, the team needs to explain, here are the outcomes that the data is telling us about or like the outcomes that the users seem to be expecting. Uh, you can talk about the outcomes a lot without talking about, you know, the the inputs. Um, uh, so, that, I don't know, it's 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 difficult, right? Yeah, it's, it, yeah. Okay. Just yeah. Think, yeah I absolutely, okay. thanks. <coughs> Any other thoughts? All right, thanks everyone. Hope you had a good DrupalCon.